the idea is that the L1 cache is going to be populated with your data, and then all you have to do is trigger a system mode interrupt, and then rather than fetching the data from SM RAM, you end up fetching it from the L1 cache. Um, in which case, you have this sort of disparity between what's in the cache and what's actually in SM RAM. So, like I told you before, my thing was we were building a VMM. Uh, the goal was to the goal was to isolate a process from a malicious system. So we have to assume that the attacker has the ability to do pretty much whatever they want on the box, provided that our VMM can isolate them. So our goal out of this is to actually say, you know, can we take system management mode and like isolate it and make it subject to the protections of the virtual machine monitor? And the nice part is that the, if you look through the developer docs and everything else, this is actually part of the design. Is so the goal of this is what's called containerization, or to put all of the SMM code into a virtual machine so that its execution can be constrained. All right. So one of the things that's interesting is that the memory controller got moved into the CPU for AMD 64, which means that all accesses to DRAM go through the processor, go through all the states, so we can control the horizontal and the vertical in that regard with page table trickery and other stuff. Um, so we don't have to worry about like the north bridge being off to the side and being configured differently. Um, so what is AMD V? Uh, AMD V is the x86-64 like virtualization extensions for AMD. Um, it's based around the VM run instruction, and I'll show a diagram on how that really works. But the idea is you have a VM run instruction, you have a VMCB, and together um, the VMCB defines exit conditions or when you would transfer control back from your guest back to the virtual machine monitor. Um, at which point you have the state of that virtual machine inside the virtual machine control block from like it's saved on the exit. At which point, um, pardon me. At which point, looking at the diagram here, it's a little bit more clear. You have a virtual machine control block. It defines like what state happens when you call a VM run. Like where do you go in the guest? What happens? Um, like all of your sort of state as at the time of the invoke or at the time it's invoked. When the ghost or the ghost, <laughs> the guest continues to run, right? And when it encounters one of those conditions that you've said, you know, like. Say, for example, you said, you know, like anytime somebody writes the address 0x90, I want it to exit back to the VMM so I can control it. When it sees that there's a write or read to 0x90, that would cause a VM exit. The VM exit would then go back and immediately uh, resume execution in the VMM right after the VM run instruction. At which point, all the, da all the data that was, all the state of the guest was captured inside the VMCB. At which point you can then check the exit code in the VMCB to see why did I exit, what did I do, how do I have to handle it, and you have your handler code right there. Um, and the idea is you would do this, handle it, emulate whatever operation you need to do. Maybe you don't let the write go through, maybe you like, make it go somewhere else, whatever else. And then you sort of continue in this loop infinitely. Like you just sort of like, okay, run the guest again, run the next guest, do whatever you gotta do. All right. And this goes on. So, a few of the key features that are going to be used, that we're going to use in order to actually put the system management mode into um, a virtual, like into a virtual machine, are we needed the ability to actually stop SMIs from being asserted because we can't have this going on while we're trying to like clean it up. It's just a matter of like keeping state atomic or in sync rather. So they added this thing called the global interrupt flag. Now the global interrupt flag, when it's set to one, allows all interrupts, but when you clear it everything is stopped. Everything is held pending. Like system mode interrupts are actually held like on the line but not taken, so you don't actually go to the SMI handler. But the line is still asserted. Um, paged real mode allows you to actually like virtualize 16-bit like execution. Um, like it's a, a mode in which paging is still applied to 16-bit code, which doesn't normally have that concept. And the last important feature that we're gonna use is the system management control register. And what this does is this actually lets us control um, like whether or not we can map SM RAM or whether or not the actual like SMI handler is invoked directly. And whether or not and it lets us also clear the line as well, just by simply writing bit patterns to the appropriate MSR. Like I said earlier, the virtual machine control block has two parts. It has a state save area, which contains guest uh, state. And it also has a control area which defines which interceptions, like what are the conditions we actually want to intercept. The things we care about for isolating uh, SMM, SMM are like the SMI bit, which actually says when there's an SMI asserted, exit out 
of the guest and uh, resume or, and proceed back to the uh, VMM. The other thing we need is we need the RSM instruction because the idea is that if we're going to run the system management mode code inside of another virtual machine, that we're actually going to need to control not only when you enter SMM, but also when you exit out of it. Because when you exit out of it, as I said earlier with the sort of defloat attack, modifying the state in SMM will affect the processor when you resume. Like, and so we need to be able to, need to, be able to control both the entry and the exit. Um, the other thing that we're going to be interested in is like interception of IO IO instructions. Again, this is because we know that there's going to be hardware configurations in which certain instructions will actually cause the hardware to then assert a system mode interrupt. And the last thing that we're going to care about are the model specific register intercepts or MSR protect. The reason for this is that once we get access to like the SMM MSRs, that means we've disabled it, and if we don't intercept it, then privileged code in the guest could then like start messing with it. Or also, we have the problem of any a malicious SMI handler might actually try to mess with this stuff as well. So how do we deal with SMIs? Um, the AMD64 Programmer's Manual offers three solutions. The first one is simply don't do anything. Um, what happens is that when an SMI is asserted, uh, from the like which I had it in the diagram earlier, basically all the ve uh, register values that are populated in the save state area are from those from the guest if it's taken in the context of the guest, um, which is sort of their solution. They're like, well, you don't have to necessarily do anything. It's going to be really hard to get to other values because you've controlled CR3, you've controlled all the save state because you've, you're controlling the guest, um, and it'll just run. The problem with this is that, again, it, it assumes you may have a, a handler that might be trusted or it's just the simplest solution. But again, the VMM protections aren't applied, so if somehow you're able to get code in there and it's able to access memory, you're kind of bummed. Um, the other solution they offer is that you can intercept all the I.O. instructions that can cause an SMI. The problem with this is that, one, it's going to be complicated. It's going to be incredibly tied to whatever like, hardware, like specific BIOS and platform you have already set up. And potentially, if you already have like, a replaced handler, it doesn't necessarily stop that. It just sort of stops you from invoking it through an I.O. I.O. instruction. So if the hardware still goes off, if you find a way to maybe stop a fan or maybe like, you know, I don't take a blowtorch and put it next to a server box or something until like a thermal event is triggered, you still could potentially, potentially run your code. And the last solution, which is what we're going to go over, is actually containerizing the SMI handler to run inside of a virtual machine. Um, the way this works is there's really two solutions for this. Um, the first solution that they offer in the manual is to create another hypervisor. So when you get access to SMRAM, simply replace the handler itself with another set of code that ends up run, like creating a virtual machine monitor that exists inside SMRAM. The idea being is that when the handler gets invoked from a system mode interrupt, this VMM creates another like, whole environment inside SMRAM where it's like, okay, this monitor and this other monitor work together such that um, the system mode interrupt happens, happens in SMRAM, it sets up a virtual machine control block and then runs the original handler with that configuration. The idea being is that if you then try to write to other memory or other stuff that isn't in SMRAM, you'll get an exit. The exit will go back to your new VMM, and you'll just exit out and run, and everything will be OK. This is a fairly complicated thing to do. Um, it also requires you to bootstrap yourself up from like uh, real mode. Uh, it's a fairly more complicated. It's not the solution I went for when I was actually like working on this. Um, the other alternative is to write code in the VMM to actually emulate switching to and from system management road management mode, and then run the SMRAM code inside the virtual machine. Um, so again, like the important thing to note, though, about intercepting SMIs is that we have this bit inside the virtual machine control block. And what happens with the intercept is that it says, OK, when this is asserted and the SM lock is, like, is 0, when I get an SMI, transfer control to the virtual machine, uh, virtual machine monitor. If the SM lock is set, which a lot of BIOSes will do to make sure you're not like, messing with this from the OS code, that actual SMI intercept is ignored. Um, the hardware just doesn't actually set the intercept, and the, actual, the original handler is invoked. So once, you, once that bit is set, you're kind of in trouble. So you need a mechanism for unlocking that bit. These are the steps uh, that you sort of have to follow in order to containerize an SMI handler. Um, like I just said, you have to ensure that the 
hardware control register like SM lockbit is zero.